Dear Innovators, Dr. Diazio here. I wanted to send you this quick message to share some points after I provided feedback to your final research presentation. Overall, I think we're doing a good job. This class is meant to be an extension of the scalability, meaning in the scalability class, you were given, we'll say, a narrower problem. You knew that you had to solve a problem in the local area and that it could deal with health, traffic, one of the local problems in the region. Here, for this class, the problem that I gave you was a bit bigger and it was up to you to focus and narrow. And one of the biggest challenges or learning opportunities from this class is, which is what I'm hope, hopefully you guys get at, is that you're able to dissect and go from big to small, meaning higher ed has a lot of problems. I think you'd agree. And there's many different paradigms and perspectives. I would say some are more important than others. But it's through data and the research that you're doing that you are expected to, one, identify the big chunks these big spots of kind of common views that suggest that uh, these are the bigger problems with non-traditional students in higher education. Some of you have done that in your presentation and that's where you should be, meaning, you know, what are the common dialogues, the common discussions, and you can kind of group them into three, four, or five different circles. And then within there, you do a deeper dive based off of other trends, other topics, interests, things related to our specific challenge, which is the USF community and the challenges of the non-traditional students within the USF community. And it may overlap some of the broader trends, but it may not. It, you have to find that out in your research. So many of you have are trying to wrestle with this big blob of research that's out there. That is exactly the point. That's what consultants do. They go out and understand the whole environment and say, dear client, which our client is USF, dear client, if you are working with KPMG or whatever clients they have, you say, here are the bigger trends that we see from other industries that we've worked with, other clients that we've worked with, we're bringing it back to you, and here is where you need to be in order to benchmark, to compete with others in these standard statistics or metrics, right? Best practices, maybe you've heard of that. And that's what consultants do. So for you, you are to go out and say, what is happening around the world, around the region, around the nation that is solving those problems and or how are you understanding those problems differently so you can come back and say, we are having these problems here at USF. We've dissected it. They are similar like this. They are different than like this. And we are going to use the design thinking methodology to solve that. And remember what the four phases of the design thinking methodology is, right? First, you're understanding the context. That's why we're doing research up front, and it's why it's front-loaded just like the scalability class. Because frankly, what I'm struggling with, with understanding your capabilities is, are you able to synthesize large amounts of data that could be conflicting, that can point you in many different directions? Are you able to put them in boxes? Are you able to put them in stories, see how they overlap, see how they connect, and what are the bigger trends, and how does that relate to our regional trends? Because they may not be the same. So once you do that, you will start identifying these opportunities and gaps, and some of you have. Some of you are not using the same things that you learned in the creativity and innovation class defer judgment. You are trying to solve the problem or picking a problem without knowing if that's a bigger problem or not and if it even relates to the USF students. So that is something to be mindful. You're not utilizing the learning you took place from the creativity and innovation class. And for those who've taken the scalability class or in the scalability class, most of you are not using the same skills that you utilized in that class. Storytelling. When does a story start with design thinking? A story starts with a beginning, an intro, a middle, and an ending. And when you watch every TV show you see, or Netflix, or Amazon, or when you watch every movie, Marvel, what is there? 
there is a certain arc of the story. Nowhere does it jump to the middle, and that's where design thinking falls. And I'm not sure if it's because you don't understand where methodology falls, right? What, when you're Sherlock Holmes and you're watching Sherlock Holmes or whatever those movies are, mystery, right? The methods that they use, they don't introduce the methods in the first opening act of the movie. No, that's released and it, uh, information's and, and what they call uh, uh, markers or milestones and release later on to help build that arc for the story. That is what design thinking is. So you have to first build the argument. That's where the research falls in. And you're missing and jumping over the most important part of building the argument or building that narrative. What is the crux? What is the conflict? What is the urgency? What is the 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 two crosses if you were to look at in terms of econ economics, right? You know, wh where are, are things colliding in terms of markets? So um, you have to go back to your basic toolkit that you learn in scalability and you learn in creativity innovation and apply that for this project. Uh, some of you have seemed to have forgotten how to present. Some of you are spot on. Uh, Elliot, for sure. Um, why? Because I've talked to Elliot. What does Elliot do? Elliot writes out a script and he practices it. That's what you need to do. That's why he doesn't do ah, uh, um, eh, whatever. There's no filler words. He practices it. He practices it, which I'm not practicing. I'm, I'm telling you off of my bullet points. But he practiced that and that's why it sounds effective and logical. Many of you are going presenting just fragmented things. We want a story. We want it to make sense. And for those who didn't know, uh, you're presenting not to me as a faculty member, but to the people who are stakeholders, who are uh, the clients that are hiring you, USF, higher ed, okay? So we have to be professional. Overall, I think we are where we should be, but there's going to be a lot more work that needs to be done so you really... Uh, round out and make a coherent presentation. These are things that you should have done in pre speech class, in your other classes, in your writing class, but uh, not all of you are carrying those lessons forward. Again, we're more or less as a group where we need to be, but just go back to what you did in terms of scalability. Most of you crushed that class, and I've been telling that class that you crushed it, and in the videos, it demonstrates you crushed it. I want to see that here with this because I know you have the tools. I know you have the skills. Again, I'm also disappointed. I held that open call uh, workshop, master class, and Q&A to have you guys come to ask questions so you can inform and inspire the scalability class and inspire the creativity class. You guys are way ahead and you have talent, and I want you to share that and build that network. People are hungry. People are starving. And besides, James Doherty, who gave that master class in – Podcasting was awesome. Where can you go and get a free master class on a, from a person who has a top 100 Apple podcast? That's right. Right here. Entrepreneurship class. Dr. Diazio. Again, I want to do it again. But tell me if you watch these videos. You guys are not putting thumbs up in the bottom. All right. If you want more content that's relevant, that's adjacent to this content, that you're going to connect and network and you want to build a better person, you be a better professional, you... Put a thumbs up in the comments below. That's how I know. All right. Signing off. Please, please listen to the presentation that I just gave. And um, double back with the quality of the presentation. Practice, practice, practice. Group the presentation. So for, for the midterm, what am I looking for? If you follow that advice, it should be clear where the gaps and opportunities are. No solutions yet. No problem solving. You're only identifying the problem, identifying it clearly, which we haven't, stating it, and from your research, you should be able to identify the opportunities as a result. So signing off, uh, keep up the good work, and I'll follow up with more.